What is bullying? What is the difference between aggressive behavior and bullying? Now, we hear the term bullying used all the time today. And there certainly is plenty of it, but it is a very specific type of aggressive behavior. Very often, children fight over things. Two people want the same ball on the playground. Two people want to be first down the slide. Um, that is when it's fighting between two peers of equal power. That's not bullying. It's, it may be nasty behavior that we want to work on, but it isn't bullying. Bullying has three critical components. The deliberate abuse of power to harm another person. So let's look at those three pieces. Deliberate, it's not accidental. We do sometimes hurt other people's feelings, and we didn't mean to. But bullying has a deliberate component to it. Abuse of power. There has to be in bullying a power imbalance. In some cases, it could be many against one. In other cases, it could be the most popular child against the weakest, the most athletic against the least athletic, et cetera. Uh, and finally, it's to cause harm. There are three types of bullying defined by the type of harm they cause. The most easy to spot is physical bullying. It's hitting, kicking, punching, and it causes physical harm. Uh, equally noticeable and very well known and recognized is emotional bullying name calling and teasing. We see that happen at all ages and in both genders, boys and girls do this. And we're very well aware that not only in the real world, but in the virtual world, this kind of emotional teasing and harassment can and does happen. But the third type of bullying is the kind that children, parents, and teachers are least likely to recognize. And it's called social bullying. It's bullying that harms us by excluding us from certain social areas. You see it even in the preschool set when they say things like, you know, I made a club and you and you are in it, but you can't be in it. And you see it on the ball field with boys when they say, I brought the ball, so I decide who plays. And we certainly see it with girls who create very uh, tight social networks through middle school and high school and decide who can be a friend who's in and who's out. There is some discussion, by the way, about whether to be called bullying, something has to happen repeatedly, or is it enough for it to happen just one time? All children will tease each other, sometimes in good fun. All children will be aggressive from time to time. It happens. It's the pattern of behavior targeting an individual over and over again that usually meets the definition of bullying and is different from other kinds of aggression. It's important to make this distinction because let's imagine the following scenario. Um, every day at lunchtime, there is one student who pushes everyone out of the way to get the chocolate milk. The school never orders enough chocolate milk and this child loves chocolate milk, pushes everyone out of the way to get the chocolate milk. That's not bullying, that's aggressive behavior, and it would be solved by ordering more chocolate milk. But if the same child pushes everyone out of the way, not because there's not enough chocolate milk, but because they like the feeling of power, they want other children to feel kind of dominated, and they stand in front of the chocolate milk and say, I'll decide whether you get any today or not, then it's bullying, and it's not gonna be solved, no matter how much chocolate milk we order. It isn't going to be solved by saying, we'll get more resources. We have to deal with it as an issue of power and the imbalance of power and the, the deliberate abuse of that power to hurt other people.